all things exist. All that you behold, though it appears without, it is within, in your imagination of which this world of mortality is but a shadow, William Blake. The world of imagination is infinite and eternal, whereas the world of generation is finite and temporary. In that eternal world, the permanent realities of everything exist. Their reflections are here, cast in a glass called nature. The oak is cut down by the axe, and the lamb falls by the knife, but their eternal forms exist forever, and are renewed by the seed of contemplative thought. William Blake The permanent realities of an extinct bird, animal, or fish live. They can be resurrected and externalized by the seed of your contemplative thought, for everything lives within you. This world of generation, I call the world of Caesar, should not be neglected, as it is an important aspect of reality, even though it is only a shadow. Scripture urges us to revise, to forgive, and change our thoughts, thereby changing the conditions of our life. This is how it is done. A friend recently wrote saying, three weeks ago a friend called, saying he was afraid he was going to be fired. I instantly revised his call. Hearing his voice bubbling with excitement, he told me how he had been praised for his work, and I felt the thrill of rejoicing with him. Today he came to my office and said the very words I heard in my imagination. This morning, while dressing, I was thinking about an ad I was working on, which carried the name of a very prominent man in San Francisco. As I ran the ad through my mind, I said to myself, I want to put the word Mr. before his name. I did it and it felt right. I made a mental note to do it when I arrived at the office and promptly dropped the thought. That afternoon, the man called, asking that I insert Mr. before his name, not in the ad, but in a radio commercial where his name was used. Then my friend added this thought. I stand in awe at the operation of this law. You ask about the little pig I saw? He was small but fat, and the way I am stuffing him today, in no time at all, he will be so big he will fill this room. For those who are not familiar with this symbol, the pig is the symbol of Christ, the power and wisdom of God. Every time you exercise your imagination lovingly on behalf of another or yourself, you are feeding Jesus Christ. My friend is stuffing his pig because every moment of time he is alert in putting this law into practice. Now a lady wrote saying, I found myself looking at an enormous building at the edge of a vast body of water where your classes were held. A man at my side asked, how do the students get to the classes? Pointing to another student who was walking on the water towards her destination, I answered, that's how it is done. Unwilling to accept my answer, the man said, but how do you do it? And I confessed, I have placed stones just below the water. Then the scene changed, and I am with a friend who said, I am pregnant. Shocked because I knew she had no husband. I asked, by whom? And before she could answer, I awoke. Three nights later, I found myself in a very large building containing a theater, where you were the one actor who was playing every part. As you assumed the role of the blind man, I realized there was no one to lead you. So I ran to help. As we walked, we came upon a young boy sound asleep. Then you said, I told him to meditate, and he has fallen asleep again. The scene changed, and I am viewing paper decorations hanging above a door. I reached up to pull them down, and when an enormous wind caught me, and I felt as though I was born in the arms of a very strong man, and awoke, saying, I love thee, O Lord. 
This marvelous series of dreams revealed much. This lady admitted crossing the water while walking on a solid foundation. Now the Bible is a parable from beginning to end, and the water is the symbol of its psychological truth. The literal interpretation of a parable is solid as a rock. When the meaning behind the parable is discovered, the stone is rolled away and the water found. However, if a little solid reality in this world is desired while playing with this psychological truth, it becomes stepping stones below the water. Loving what is heard is not enough. One must be willing to go all out and walk on the water. Instead, feeling she must be practical as she was living in a world of reality where rent must be paid, food bought, and clothes purchased, she is unable to walk by faith at the present time. Let me give you a definition that came to me concerning the word faith. Faith is the subjective appropriation of an objective hope. When my friend revised the first telephone conversation, he subjectively appropriated what he hoped would objectify for his friend. He remained faithful to his imaginal act and confirmation came. Do as my friend does and you will experience the glorious sensation of walking on the water in your mystical world. In my own case, I was pulled by a wonderful goose, the symbol of the Holy Spirit. Having lassoed him with a silver chain, the symbol of knowledge, he propelled me over this fabulous water. This is he who will lead you into all things, as recorded in the 14th chapter of the book of John. The lady saw the protean man when she saw me playing all the parts. As the dreamer of the dream, she has been impregnated by the one she spoke to when she awoke, saying, I love thee, O Lord. Mary did not know the name of the one who impregnated her, yet it was the same Lord, the same I am. In this lady's dream, she was so brutally honest with herself when the man insisted that she tell him how she crossed the water. She could have said she walked on the water. Instead, she told him exactly how it, how it was done, thereby admitting to herself that she has not gone all out and lived by the law, but has a little anchor on the side in the event it doesn't work. In Barbados, we have a saying, I have a hind claw, meaning there is some money tucked away in the bank, a little income from the family, or something I can fall back on just in case. We have these beach crabs on the island that are almost impossible to catch. Running at top speed, the crab can run right over a precipice and disappear. If you follow him, you would break your neck in the fall. But the crab has a hind claw that stops his fall. He grabs the earth just below the surface, and then the crab can pause and get his breath before climbing back and entering the race again. I urge you not to have a hind claw. Be for me or against me, but be one way or the other. Now, I want to share an experience of a lady who wrote saying, About a year ago, I was deeply concerned for my mother. While lying on my bed, I began to imagine her face radiantly happy and hear her tell me she had never known such happiness before. As I listened, I heard my name whispered softly three times. Startled. I raised myself off the pillow to see you standing in mid-air. Dressed in a gray suit, you smiled, raised your arms, and removed the eyes from your head. Then you came over, and calling me brother, you pressed them into my eyes. Bending your head, I watched it grow transparent and enormous in size. Then I saw that every living thing in the universe was there. You straightened up, and as you did, your head returned to its normal size. Again, raising your right hand, you took off the top of your head and handed it to me, where I saw the greenest of green grass growing there, and you vanished. Yes, I called this lady brother advisedly, for regardless of the sex worn here, we are immortal brothers, all of us. So I say, go unto my brothers and say unto them, I have ascended unto my God, and your God unto my father and your father. It was over a year ago when I placed my eyes into her sockets and gave her sight. Now she has become the incurrent eyewitness. 
In her vision, she saw a long table, a man dressed in the white robe of a judge, carrying a gavel in his hand, entered the room. Looking directly at her, the gavel hit the table, and he said, I pronounce you the incurrent eyewitness. The word incurrent means giving passage to a current that flows inward. This lady is now so conditioned that I can reveal all things to her so that she can know the truth of the statement. All that you behold, though it appears without, it is within, in your imagination, of which this world of immortality is but a shadow. She saw that every living thing was contained in my immortal head. Destroy the garment I now wear, or anything in my world, and I will reproduce it again, for my immortal head cannot be destroyed. Start now to practice what the Bible calls repentance, which is a radical change of attitude. No matter what it is, if it does not conform to your ideal, change it by subjectively appropriating your goal. Remain faithful to it, and no earthly power can keep you from attaining it. Go all out and walk on the water. Don't be like Peter, whose understanding told him imagination didn't make sense, symbolizes his feet, or you will drown in the sea of illusion. Imagination, speaking to his faith, said, Peter, come. And as Peter walked, he looked down to see how this was possible and sank. My friend, who did not look down, walked on the water in the direction of his wish fulfilled, and it was. All of the Bible stories will be fulfilled, literally, on different levels of your being. You will experience them all because you are Jesus Christ. Blake tells us so beautifully. Desires and perceptions of man, untaught by anything but organs of sense, must be limited to objects of sense. Therefore, God becomes man, that man may become God. If you only knew what your organs of sense reveal, you would never perceive anything beyond them. It would be horrible to remain an organ of sense and never transcend it. But God brought creation with him when he became humanity, and you are here to awaken to that fact. If God did not become you, you would be in an, an animated body, limited to all that your sense organs would reveal. But having become you, God is awakened and will give you desires and their fulfillments far beyond the wildest dream of those who are still limited to the organ of sense. When Blake said, All that you behold, though it appears without, it is within you, he meant it. Being an incurrent eyewitness, like my friend, Blake saw God's mystery of salvation clearly. I urge you to exercise your divine right by using your imagination. Be like my friend who is consciously feeding his pig. Every moment of time you have the opportunity to feed your pig. When someone phones to tell you their misfortune, revise their words. Go about your business of creation on the inside and do not do a thing on the outside. Use your imagination and let your words come into being. All things are possible to you because you are all imagination and imagination creates reality. Knowing what you want, imagine you have it. Knowing what you want to be, imagine you are it. Subjectively, appropriate your objective hope and you have assumed a virtue you did not have. Ask no one to help and do not feel below the water for something to fall back on if imagination doesn't work. Instead, learn to count on your true self, who is Jesus Christ. Jesus, your own wonderful human imagination, is your hope of glory, and there is no other Christ. Defined as God's power and wisdom, imagination is in travail until Christ is formed in you. On that day, your history will be changed from B.C. to A.D., and every year thereafter will be the year of the Lord. Having been formed in you, Christ is born, and the words of Isaiah become yours. For to you a child is born, and a son is given. The government shall then be upon your shoulders, and you will be the wonderful counselor, mighty God, everlasting Father, Prince of Peace, 
and your aim there shall have no end.